This is Hearts of Wulin, Many Venoms. Uh, I want to start by having all of us introduce ourselves. Um, when I call on you, please say your name, your pronouns, and anything else you would like for us to know about you. Um, I will begin. My name is Jason. I use he or they. And I am the publisher of Hearts of Wulin, though not the author. I go way back with this game, though. I uh, have not played it in a while or run it in a while so it might be a little a little um uh, a little kind of touch and go or for, for a minute but i'm excited to get going with it again uh now that the sort of final thing is done it's it's being printed i literally just today got like the proofs and stuff so uh, we're really excited about that uh let's go over to i have to go in the order of how you appear on my little thing here uh chris Hi, I'm Chris, uh, he, him. I have nothing to plug yet, but maybe in a week or two, I'll be able to plug my itch store, so. Awesome, love it, thank you. Let's go to David. Hi, my name's David. I use he, him pronouns. Um, I've gotten the opportunity to help out with Hearts of Lulin in some of the developmental editing stage. So I am very excited to be a part of this. Thank you. Yeah, the, also the the line editor as well. So if you all get your books and find um, uh, problems, you know who to say. <laughs> if um, you see a typo, you can point <laughs> your finger at this guy. This guy right there. Thank you so much. Uh, let's go to Nathan. Hi, I'm uh, I'm Nathan. Pronouns he him, and uh, I have uh, been part of the gauntlet gaming community um sort of as a ghost just sort of watching from the sidelines uh i've played in a few games and i'm excited to play today fabulous thank you and stephanie or steph yeah um hi i'm steph i use they them pronouns and uh really i have not actually done anything quote unquote officially with the gauntlet before so like this is like the first game I'm in. Yeah, related. I think it is. Well, you did the workshop though. So that's not yeah, I did the right. workshop, but like actually playing in a game, even yeah. though I've been listening to like the podcasts and like for the past two years. And run a heck of a lot of the between. Yeah. <laughs> so, which I'm always here for. Uh, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to begin by doing a procedure called CATS. CATS is an acronym that stands for concept, aim, tone and subject matter. The reason why I do this is just to establish some basic expectations for what we're gonna be doing over the next few weeks. And so I'll begin that now. Uh, the concept of Hearts of Wulin. Hearts of Wulin is a game of wuxia melodrama. It is uh, the thing that you might most readily be familiar with that it compares to is Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, uh, but also, but it takes loads of um, uh, inspiration from wuxia novels and wuxia movies, um, even some of the comic books. The thing about Hearts of Wulin is it does have martial arts and it does have a combat aspect to it, but it's real sort of thing that it does is romance. It's a romantic game. And here we use the word romantic, not in the sense necessarily of like romantic love, but although it can be that, but romance in the sort of literary sense, like it's all about nature. It's about uh, it's about feelings, it's about poetry, it's about epic vistas um, and drama, melodrama in particular. These are characters who have very intense feelings, uh, but they don't talk about them. <laughs> um, they, they turn away or fight. <laughs> and so that is sort of uh, what the game is about. Um, it, so that's that's sort of Hearts of Wulin, sort of like a uh, big picture. What we're gonna be doing over the next few weeks is a little scenario uh, that I have written for the game that takes place in and around a tournament being held on an island uh, away from the grasp of the emperor. The aim of, the aim of you as players is to play your character in a way that leans into your emotional entanglements and to show us your how your character is a conflicted badass, right? The aim of today's session is to create characters 
and then introduce those characters. And then we'll take a little bit of a break, uh, kind of a longer break than normal, so that I can think about everything that we've done up to that point and decide how I want the session to of play to start. And yeah, and so I think that's sort of, we'll kind of set that as our aim for now. The tone of the game is, well, I've already hinted at it, but it's very um, high drama, high romance. Um, it's very big until it's not, that it becomes very small when it's just about like glances and, and words barely spoken, right? So it sort of vacillates between this, this sort of sweeping dramatic uh, moments and these like more smaller intimate moments. Importantly, this, this game does like romance figures into it, but it's the kind of thing where the sort of ultimate expression of that romance would be like the characters touching hands <laughs> or maybe a kiss, right? Like that's really, really way out there, right? Um, it never ever like goes to anything sexual or anything like that. That's very off genre. And that kind of leads us to subject matter. There's nothing in the game that I think is worth calling out in terms of subject matter, certainly not like our other games, Trophy in the Between and Brindlewood Bay, uh, which can get pretty horrific and, and gross. Uh, I think the only thing to sort of maybe call out is just that uh, romance between NPCs and characters is a thing that can happen, although we can talk about ways of, of adjusting that if we need to, if it's just something you're not comfortable with. In any case, we're gonna have three safety tools on the table. Uh, the open door policy, the X card, and lines and veils. The open door policy is very straightforward. Um, you can leave for any reason. Uh, maybe tell us if you are, <laughs> but if you have to go, you can go. Um, the X card in the context of this video call, if something happens that you find to be objectionable for any reason really, but uh, especially if it kind of jars with your having a good time, uh, you can just say X card or type it into the chat and I'll stop and we'll kind of change whatever needs to be changed. I might ask you what is being X carded, but I won't ask why is it being X carded. And then the most important tool to me is lines and veils. We have a tab on the character keeper that I linked you to that has our lines and veils. Um, I'm gonna mark my lines and veils now and I'll explain them just so you know how they work. And then whenever you get a chance, just go through and, uh, and mark your lines and veils as well. If you need to add something in, you have some space to add things in. But I'm gonna put sexual violence as a line. And what that means is I don't want any, just a line just means it's not gonna happen, period. There's not gonna be sexual violence in the game. I don't know why it would come up anyway, but just to just put it out there. I'm also gonna put torture behind a veil. Um, I'm okay with torture being a thing that happens in the game, but I prefer not to role play it. And you also have the option of just doing ask first. So if it's something you just, you know, you're kind of a little, um, you're just not sure if you want to do it or not, uh, you know, we, you can have us ask you first or just ask uh, the, the table first and then we'll discuss it if we need to. So whenever you get a chance, just do that. And that pretty much covers cats. I think what I want to do now is sort of roll right into character creation. So on that same sheet, um, we're gonna be on this tab called character creation. That's sort of where we're working off of. I'm not gonna include this in the recording. So if you're watching the video, uh, we are not gonna subject you to character creation, which can be a little uh, long and not super interesting. But we will probably, once the campaign is over, we'll make the sheet available on the YouTube video. So if somebody wants to see how it all played out, they can, they can do so. And so I'm gonna pause the recording now. Okay, we're back. We are not completely done with character creation, but we are checking back in with everyone watching the video, all 10 of you, um, to introduce the characters. So what I wanna do is go around the table and have everyone introduce their character by name, look. Um, if you know anything about their story so far, you can tell us that as well. And I'd also like to know what um, your playbook and role is and what you can do with your moves, what sorts of things you are able to do. And so I'm gonna start with Nathan and Nathan's character fifth. Wait, we have a fifth, a fifth Raven and a ninth Raven. <laughs> <laughs> we need to. <laughs> I'm okay with this. <laughs> I'm okay with this, but it is. It could get confusing. Uh, Steph is the ninth Raven. So, <laughs> the well, two of you are very because one of the today. entanglements. 
Let's just put right. a pin in that. I got a, I, I, one of my entanglements uh, has a, might play into that. So, okay. uh, so um, yeah, so my character's name is Fifth Raven. Um, he, him pronouns. Um, and his look is road worn clothes, uh, bare arms, and a stern grip. Um, and he's the local acupuncturist, which is also his style. Um, and uh, oh, the uh, playbook I picked was unorthodoxed with the role of accidental. Um, so he says, he, he says he doesn't know how to fight, he doesn't fight and stuff, but how he engages in fighting is using acupuncture and needles and stuff to either disarm or immobilize or he doesn't really want to hurt anyone. Uh, and then uh, you would go over my uh, stats. No, just the moves. What do your moves do? Uh, okay, yeah, so I picked, uh, let's see, the accidental, you don't know martial arts and you and you believe that but somehow you tumble through conflicts and flummox opponents you have a style element but no style or weapons beyond what you mistakenly pick up it could be luck a curse or forgotten teachings the first time you fight a named opponent you get plus one forward however in every fight you must always show your opponent mercy i like it um, and then the uh move i picked of the one of the two moves i picked was uh 10 miles of peach blossoms. I have plus one ongoing when interacting with common salt of the earth folk. You know how to uh, show them you're one of their own. And I picked a way of choices. When you defeat a named foe, you may humiliate them comically if you show them mercy. You don't mark XP, but instead gain a bond with them. You may also choose a person or group who now views your opponent in a different way. Say who that group is, as well as how the group now sees them. Fantastic, thank you. If anyone has any questions about any of the characters as we're doing this, just say so. Uh, I think I'm okay for now though. And I'm gonna move on to David and Shadowless Morning. I'm playing Bao, who's known as the Shadowless Morning. Um, it's the aware playbook and I selected the traveling teacher uh, as the role move um, from the aware playbook. So that move means uh, people will constantly challenge you, seek out your advice or beg for you to take them on as a student. Uh, once per session, if you're in a reasonably accessible er area, you may declare that someone shows up to interrupt events. You may use this before rolling inner conflict to avoid any role. If you do mark XP as if you rolled inner conflict. Um, I think that Shadowless Morning is named that because, because of his status as a teacher. Um, it's as if he is so bright and aware that it's bright as the morning, but a morning without shadow. Um, that's, that's how he was given that name. Um, so people are constantly trying to learn from him. Um, Let's see the What's other look? The, the look is uh, chiseled features kind eyes with an easy smile uh, and he's constantly dressed in martial dress um, thinking the kind of uh, like light martial dress that you would use for combat or, or tournament combat but not like war nice and what about, what about your fighting style what does that do so my fighting style is called hidden tapestry um based on the uh, style element of water, which is all about awareness, wisdom, and flexibility. Um, he uses a, an unusual weapon, which is a, a, a seemingly endless tapestry of made of scarves of silk, cloth, and leather in a, in a variety of colors that, just, um, that he can control and manipulate uh, as it moves through the air to accomplish seemingly impossible uh, attacks on his enemies. Nice, I love it. And what about your other moves apart from Traveling Teacher? 
So my other moves are Storm Rider. Once per scene, you may travel to anywhere within line of sight. You move like a blur. This can be accomplished regardless of height or distance, as long as nothing completely bars your way. And uh, Legend of Awakening. Um, while you have your style element marked, you may use another element for combat actions. That will be handy. Cool. Uh, fantastic. I, th I feel OK right now. Um, I don't think I have any other questions. So let's go to Steph and Ninth Raven. <laughs> who, are, who are all these ravens? <laughs> we just don't know. But I, I imagine that when I first met the fifth raven, I was a bit confused because like we did not know each other before this. <laughs> um, but however, it's the raven is the unimportant part. It's the ninth that's important important because like I'm the ninth raven of the ninth void so I am a swordsman uh the loyal and I am being sent out into the world to do a thing I don't know what that is yet but but uh, my moves are uh flying daggers where I if I spend a bond with someone I can arrive at their location in and others can spend a bond with me to, for them for me to show up as well. So, and trail the everlasting hero. When you hunt someone on a hit, you know exactly where to find them and can track them until you do so. On a ten plus, they're not alerted, and you take plus one board against them. On a miss, someone unpleasant finds you first. So I'm I'm tracking down something apparently. Yeah, I like it. Um, that's great. Uh, what did, tell us about your style. What is that all about? Um, I have the striking viper where I do very quick, precise strikes with my blade. Fantastic. And what's your look? Uh, oh, my look is piercing eyes, concealing hat, and modest clothing. Terrific. Um, great, thanks. Okay, Chris, tell us about Stone of the Heavens. Stone of the Heavens takes his name from the temple that he hails from because I am uh, I have selected the student playbook. Uh, roll. Hang on, let me get the name. The Hopeful Apprentice. So I have struck out on my own to prove something about myself. I don't know what that is, and neither does the character, so it works. Uh, my style is the Path of the Unbroken Pattern. And I use a, an actual weapon that childhood monks use called the Monk's Spade, which is essentially just a <coughs> a staff with various disarming implements that also doubles as a shovel to bury roadside corpses. Uh, my moves. Yeah, what are right? your moves? Doing moves? Yeah, what are your other moves I, that you chose? I have blade heart when attempt when you are attempting to change the loyalty of purpose or purpose of a worthy agent of the villain roll on the 10 plus your words reach them. They will act to aid you right now. They may come with you go to face their master or flee on a seven and nine your wound your words make them hesitate choose whether your words plant doubts in their mind or if they take inadvertent action to assist you on a miss they fool you with a seeming change of heart and face to fate. At the start of every session, roll 2d6 without an element. On a six minus, mark XP, and the GM gains a move to use against you. On a hit, write down the roll result. At any time during the session, you may swap this roll result for any result belonging to you or your allies. Your ally then may add the element and resolve the roll as usual. And that's it. Fantastic. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to kind of think about that one because it has kind of a kind of implicates GM stuff. So, but it's cool though. Awesome. Um, all right. And have you chosen your look yet? I have a gentle face, monastic robes, and uh, an unassuming demeanor. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Great. 
So now that we have introduced all the characters in a real basic way, we're going to do entanglements. So you each have a spot for a romantic entanglement and a general entanglement. And here I'll note that you wanna look at the part of the character sheet that says entanglements, uh, not the part that says bonds. Um, we go down one more. And so you're gonna basically read through the entanglements that are on the tab there. You have some that are specific to your playbook and others that are more generally applicable, but you'll need one romantic and one general. And in terms of the characters that are named in the blanks, most of them are gonna be NPCs and you can just use um, the names list there to kind of make up some characters. Um, and then at least one of your entanglements has to have another player character involved in it. Importantly, the entanglements, a really important thing to keep in mind is they are only from your point of view. So just because you think a thing doesn't mean it's necessarily true. Your character believes this is the case, but it may not actually be the case. That's kind of a genre thing. So even if it kind of conflicts with like another player's idea of their character and you name them in the entanglement in a way that kind of conflicts, it's okay because again, it's not necessarily the truth of the situation. It's just how you perceive the relationship. And these are gonna get, uh, well, entangled. They get really, really kind of complicated on purpose. And um, a lot of what I'll be doing on our first break is kind of trying to figure out exactly how I wanna push them and play with them. But you'll have one general and one romantic. And so go ahead and read through your options, either ones from your playbook or just something from the general list and try not to duplicate. So be sure to communicate with each other as you do that. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording again and we'll pick up again to read them once they're done. Okay, we are ready to talk entanglements and as advertised, it's gonna get tangled up really fast. So I wanna go through and just make sure that at a basic level, we kind of understand how things are working. This is not gonna be permanent. These entanglements will change as we play, but just so that we have a sense of like who the characters are, the kind of main characters that we're playing around with, how they relate to each other and how you all relate to each other. So we're gonna start with um, Fifth Raven's entanglements. Fifth Raven has as a romantic entanglement, I disguised myself to get close to Ninth Raven, but Yin, their lover, suspects and hates me. Now, is Yin actually their lover? We'll find out in a moment, but in any case, this is what Fifth Raven believes. And then you have the general entanglement of Fifth Raven, which is Stone of the Heavens knows my secret and threatens to tell my friend Empty Fist Dancer who will not understand why I've deceived them. Do we know what that secret is yet? Or are we gonna figure that out as we play? I was thinking it would be, um, you know, right now, Fifth Raven is disguised himself to, for everyone to get close to Ninth Raven. And so uh, Stone of Heavens knows that I really am you're just in disguise. Raven, Got it. Okay. But I'm in disguise. So you're actually not um, even like, you're going to be at this tournament like you're not even a contestant in the tournament. You're just there like kind of hanging out or whatever, uh, an onlooker, I guess. I mean, I could be the acupuncturist for the <laughs> Exactly, yeah, yeah, no, that's good, I like it. Okay, good, I think this is great. Um, let's keep going. Well, we might have to circle back, but let's, let's keep going. So Shadowless Morning, our, our traveling teacher, romantic entanglement, I love Empty Fist Dancer, okay, um, who, who I overlooked for too long, this happens but now they love Fifth Raven. Ah, very interesting. Hmm. And we know that Fifth Raven is a friend to Empty Fist Dancer, but it sounds like maybe Fifth Raven doesn't know Empty Fist Dancer might be in love with him. <laughs> is that fair to say? Of course. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, we never speak directly as to any of right. these things. So how... How would Fifth Raven know? I don't know. But I, I know because I see. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's good. Think, Why'd you overlook uh, them? What, what was what was about Empty Fist Dancer that made you like ignore them? Um, I think that Empty Fist Dancer is another teacher. Okay. Um, and it seemed like 
improper for us to be involved romantically because our our styles are so truly different it seemed incompatible they're all they're all fire and um and speed and i'm i'm all about um wisdom awareness and flexibility i see so it's an opposite attract sort of situation although it sounds like right now this is just unidirectional you, you are suddenly <laughs> kind of into empty fist dancer but empty fist dancer is allegedly uh seeking fifth raven okay good uh your general entanglement is i have discovered my friend stone of the heavens which is chris's character uh has hidden their true power from me but told ninth raven another friend i'm curious about this relationship between between stone of the heavens and um and shadowless morning is this a mentor mentee relationship or what's the deal there do we think let's talk about it um so chris your character is a hopeful apprentice do you think that you learned from me or from somebody else or from um empty fist dancer what do you think I think, ooh, Empty Fist, I had not considered Empty Fist Dancer, but the, yeah, I learned from someone at my temple or someone else, and then I, I don't want, I, I wonder if it would be interesting if I didn't seek you out as a teacher. We had, I sought out, like, Ninth Raven, who is my friend, and we just wound up traveling together, and you refused to teach me. Oh, so this is like a you refused to teach you refused to teach stone of the heavens because you thought he wasn't good enough is that the idea maybe yeah because um, one of my entanglements is that my senior shadowless morning disapproves of me right okay interesting but right. now shadowless morning has discovered that stone of the heavens was basically holding back for some reason right yeah i, th I think i disapprove of the the hidden power that I see within them. Oh, it's the power um, itself that you disapprove of. Oh, I disapprove of the deception. Oh, and that as well. <laughs> it, I don't. I don't disapprove of the power. I disapprove okay. of the deception. Had okay. Had uh, had Stone of the Heavens been forthright, I probably would have taken them on. Ah, uh, good. Okay, um, I like it. That feels good. At least, yeah. And again, and again this is your point of view. So that's right. Good. And and Ninth Raven is in on all of this on both entanglements, which I think is is great. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Okay, so let's go to Ninth Raven and see what they are up to entanglement wise. So their romantic entanglement is: I know Yin desires me. We'll put a pin in Yin for a moment. But Sky Daughter, who I pine for loves them. Okay, so we have some new NPCs. Well, Yin, we first learned about Yin back with Fifth Raven, where we learned that um, Yin uh, knows <laughs> uh, what's up with, with Fifth Raven. And actually, uh, Fifth Raven at least believes that Yin has bad feelings toward Fifth Raven. Uh, interesting. But it turns out that Yin is not actually Ninth Raven's lover, uh, but Yin desires Ninth Raven. Okay, that's great. And then we have Sky Daughter. Um, I'm curious, Ninth Raven, why do you pine for Sky Daughter? Well, Sky Daughter, like, I met her on my initial travels, like, before I came together with this group and every so often I would travel to where she her village is and she's she's a just a seamstress just someone that most people would overlook but she's just very calm collected and very beautiful interesting and yet she has a woolly name sky daughter mm -hmm. which yeah. means she probably has some talent that uh, maybe she keeps hidden or mm -hmm. um, we'll see, but good. Uh, okay, let's go to your general one then. I swore to Shadowless Morning, our teacher, that I would protect Stone of the Heavens, but they would be offended if they knew. Who would be offended? Stone of the Heavens would be offended? Uh, 
I think so because yeah. like Stone in the Heavens told me a secret mm-hmm. and uh of like their power and like they they are like yeah I am capable of defending myself I'm capable of all these things and my teacher just d- doubts me and I'm like yes your teacher mm-hmm. who I who literally kind of hired me to protect you because he thought you weren't very strong in the first place. Yeah, that's it's good. not that they aren't strong. It's that they are full of deception. <laughs> and you must protect them before this consumes them. But Ninth Raven might think, you think that they're not strong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or exactly. That, or he's not strong, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, All is clear on the shadow this morning. <laughs> <laughs> good. Okay, good. Uh, I like where this is going. Let's go to Stone of the Heavens then. Stone of the Heavens, romantic entanglement. I fled from John because of the heartache. Oh, but Gengshin, their lover, has called me back to honor a debt. What's this all about? Who are these characters? I don't know. <laughs> Just needed NPCs. So let's I figure can... it out. Let's figure it out. I fled from Jean because of the heartache. Okay, so what's the heartache about then? Are you, is this a former lover, I guess? Like this is someone who- uh, Former lover or someone I couldn't love because I was, you know, I'm, I'm sworn to the cloth. Okay, very good, okay. And- so Jean is probably from like the village outside my temple. Okay. <laughs> and Jean and... is probably like a local official there or probably someone with like, you know, more uh, like real, bureaucratic power Mm -hmm. but and is john's lover has called me back to honor a debt how interesting what's the so you're not going to be able to go back uh so we have to figure out a way to make this entanglement relevant to what we're doing and so i think what it might be it might be better to sort of characterize it as Gunction has simply asked you to honor your debt, right? I think that like, yeah. there is a debt to be honored. Um, okay, good. What is the, uh, do you have any thoughts on the debt yet? Like what, what's the stuff? Uh, it might, it might be that I, like, if we tie the debt to a person also on the island. Yeah. Oh, good. Like I, I have debt to this person who like, because I let them out of prison in something and like, mm. I like it. How about we change to make it a little bit more tight with the scenario I've done? Why don't we change Gungshin to Gilded Eel? Okay. She'll type that for you. Gilded Gilded Eel's the bad guy. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So Gilded Eel, uh, who is apparently Jean's lover, which is great has called me back to honor a debt. So you are on Gilded Eels Island to honor yep. a debt. Okay, good. All right, that that makes it tighter. That's good. There we go. And your other one is, my senior shadow this morning disapproves of me. We know why now. And my friend Ninth Raven agrees with them, or you believe Ninth Raven agrees. Do you disapprove Ninth Raven in actuality? I think it's more or less we disapprove in like different ways. Wait, because different like, ways, yeah. Because like, because like, I'm trying to agree with Shadowless Morning because like I've been hired by him. However, I'm thinking I'm agreeing on the fact that Shadowless Morning thinks that uh, Stone of the Heavens is weak, even though that's not true. Mm. But however, I know different, and I'm just like, mm, it's a bit complicated here, <laughs> and I don't know what to do with this. That's good. We, we will we will interrogate it for sure. Okay, I think I feel okay about entanglements at this point. So n- the next thing to do for character creation is bonds. So look at your entanglements and pick one character from each to have a bond with, and you'll fill that in on the little bond section of your character sheet. What bonds are is you can spend a bond, and these start at one, you can spend a bond to get a bonus to a die roll as long as that character is the subject of the action being taken. So uh, if you were, if you have a bond with Shadow of the Morning and you're defending them in a duel, uh, then you would you could spend the bond to get a plus one, right? Or, or whatever the circumstances are. And these 
you can get like more than one. Uh, you can like get multiple bonds with someone, uh, but every time you spend one, you just lower the number essentially. And you can get brand new bonds as well. But for now, pick uh, one character each from each one and, uh, and we'll be good to go. Oh, to be clear, that's gilded eel as in, uh, it's supposed to be gilt, but it's like, it's, it, it's, it's called gilded, like gold. Oh yeah, sorry, without the U. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is completely my bad. Yeah, it's, it's in proper English, it's my fault, but I just, <laughs> but, but that's what he goes by, he goes by gilded eel. Proper English is not a real thing. Yeah. Uh, let's go. I think it should technically be gilt eel. But... Who cares? Exactly. The video <laughs> sounds better. I agree. Okay, good. Um, characters are introduced. Bonds are more or less done. And let's let's go ahead and take our break. So we're gonna take kind of a long break because I need some time to process all this and figure out how the scenario is gonna start. Um, and then once we get back from break, we'll just play until as long as we have. Um, be thinking about your entanglements and I'll be thinking about them as well. Uh, my job is to sort of put them in your way essentially, like, you know, get those characters kind of in the scene and kind of complicate your lives. And, um, we'll, and we'll kind of learn the game sort of just step by step, like as we need things, we'll kind of discuss it, how the, how the moves work and stuff. But for now, we'll take a 20 minute break. So let's just come back at 10 till, okay? Okay, so at the beginning of our sort of official beginning of our session, um, we have to do a couple of things. I think, I think at least one of you has a move that has to fire off right now. And okay, we'll do that in a moment. Uh, but first, everyone take a look at your entanglements. And we won't have a whole, long to play today, but we'll give it a shot. Go ahead and decide which of the two you want to highlight. Highlighting it means it's the one you care most to explore uh, today in the time that we have. At the end of the session, you get experience points um, so long as your entanglement sort of came up in the story in some way. And the highlighted one you get two experience points for. So, and then you can just, um, to highlight it, just you know, pick the little paint can thing or whatever you want, but as long as we know which one's highlighted. And I think that Stone of Heavens, your move face, face to fate. <laughs> uh, will get rolled. Um, if you have dice in front of you, you can just roll regular dice. Uh, oh, I, you should have said that during the break. I thought we had an online roller. I could have gotten no, dice. I can grab one. I can grab one. It's fine. Right. Here's an online, roll, an online roller if we need it. But if you I got them. Dice... Okay, cool. That is a nine. Okay, on a hit, uh, write down the nine. And at any time during the session, you can swap that out uh, for something else, another result belonging to you or one of your allies. Um, you or your ally then adds the element and resolves the roll as usual. Um, the swapped out roll goes that. away. Don't want mark six P. So if you want to change something into a nine, you can do so. Just gonna put that next to the move. Yeah, just note it wherever you want. And so the trial of many venoms is a tournament that is held periodically by a man called Gilded Eel. Gilded Eel has a very notorious reputation in the empire. When he was younger, he was actually the counselor 
to the emperor himself. But they had a bit of a falling out. And in the years since, Gildadil has been something of a thorn in the emperor's side. He lives on this island, an island where the law can't reach. And on this island, he holds the trial of many Venom's tournaments in which warriors from across the land are invited to come, have three days of essentially partying and fighting <laughs> and tournamenting, and they have a chance to win glory for themselves and be named this year's champion. But of course, Gilded Eel almost certainly has ulterior motives um, in holding the tournament. What those are, we shall discover. You all may have your own motives for participating in the tournament. Be thinking about that. If it's just simple glory, then that's fine. But if there's something else, well, there's something else. But we sort of begin with all of the characters and all of the other contestants, as well as onlookers and, uh, and people who are trying to take financial advantage uh, of, the, of the tournament, a, a commercial opportunity, if you will. People arriving at the island on, on ships, multiple ships. It's nighttime and the moon is bright in the sky, illuminating all these ships, all these ships moving along in dark waters as we get closer to Gilded Eels Island. And we can see in the distance lanterns and torchlight uh, from coming from the island. You're each on a different ship. <laughs> You're not together at the start. And it would be a fairly unremarkable journey uh, to either, uh, some of the ships will be able to dock, some will have to drop anchor. But in any case, your arrival is interrupted by all of the ships, including ones that you're not on, being boarded by small boarding parties in small boats. These boarding parties are throwing up grappling hooks and ladders and other means of clamoring up the ships. And these people are hostile. Um, they are fighting anybody they encounter on the deck of the ship. Interestingly, they are not marked in any way. They're just wearing dark clothing and, uh, and they have their faces partially wrapped so that no one would be recognized. Whoever these people are, they don't wanna know. They don't want anyone here to know who's doing this action, but it's a massive assault on everyone arriving on the island. And so, I think I just want to go around the table and find out before this assault takes place, this nighttime uh, boarding raid on the ships that are arriving on the island, where do we find your character? Are they down below? Are they on deck? Are they doing something else? Um, I'm going to start with, and here it would probably be helpful to go ahead and change your Zoom name to your character name. I'm going to start with Shadowless Morning. So Shadowless Morning, where do we find you right before the assault? You said this was in the evening time? It's nighttime, yeah, moon's in the sky. Um, I think that I was in the middle of preparing tea for myself and like a couple other people. Down below? Yes. Okay. And over on an entirely different ship, Stone of the Heavens, what are you doing? Standing at the bow just staring off and scoping out the island. And Fifth Raven, what about you? More or less just wandering oh. about the ship. Oh, that's, that's Ninth Raven. Oh, <laughs> fifth, fifth, oh God. No worries. Fifth Raven. Yeah, you're muted, Fifth Raven. We can't hear you. Um, I, think, um, I think Fifth Raven's too nervous to be below deck, and he's... Uh, up on the top deck, um, maybe, uh, you know, sitting and, and trying to meditate and trying to calm himself down, but he's having a lot of emotions right now. So he's kind of unsuccessfully trying to 
you know, just be in the moment, but all he can do is think, he's just very anxious about what's going to be happening soon. And Ninth Raven? Wandering the ship, keeping just on edge, like, just like something's going to be happening soon. I don't know what. Good. As the, uh, as the boats are getting up pretty close, no one spotted them yet, and everything is still pretty calm. You hear, in the distance on the island, you hear like the sounds of revelry. People have already arrived before you, right? Get very excited for this three-day event. Fifth Raven, you're here in the guise of an acupuncturist, um, as uh, we were told earlier. And I think that there's this one particular character, um, I need to name them real fast. We'll name him um, we'll mate we'll name him you why you he is participating in the tournament he comes to you and he says, oh, sir, I, I couldn't help but notice that you had, you have tools, tools that are used by the acupuncturists, uh, needles and such. Uh, uh, do, do you practice acupuncture? You're muted. Uh, yes, I do. You are you in pain? Yes, yes. I, I don't know what happened, but I, I, I have just those terrible, terrible. Oh, I think I strained my, I strained my, my neck, um, and, and possibly my leg as well. Um, well, in my back. I mean, just lots of strain, really. Oh my. Well, let's uh, let's please uh, lay down and take your shirt off. Let me see. He does. He says, uh, "This is this is just really something, huh? Uh, I mean, here I am." I'm, 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 I'm entering the tournament, and I and I'm having all of these, all of these these terrible pains. Do you suppose it's just nerves? It, well, yes. The the body does. Um, the the body will uh, hold on to any of uh, anything that you're keeping suppressed deep down inside, and and express it physically, uh, usually in different points on the body that's why we use the needles to relieve to relieve these points of stress so let me see and uh, i'll just sort of uh read your energy here and figure out how i can help you get more relaxed as you're doing this as you're sort of tending to him that's when you'll you'll hear the clunk clunk of grappling hooks landing <laughs> on the on the railing <laughs> and you'll see people scampering up the sides boarding the ship and you realize that the that there's an invasion happening here we'll come back to you in a moment fifth raven shadowless morning you hear down below you know you're making you're making tea and i think there's a, a very very old woman uh who's there, probably some sort of washerwoman or something who's coming to, to work on the island during this time. And, um, you know, let's just have that scene with her first. She says, you know, maybe, uh, are you older, Shadowless Morning? As your teacher, are you older than kind of most other people around? Um, I don't think I'm old. I think I'm middle-aged. Okay, okay. But like probably older than like Stone of the Heavens or whatever. Right. right? Yeah, yeah, okay, good. Um, so she's not, she's a little older than middle-aged, but I think just because you're a little older, she's sort of like has gravitated towards you. And, um, and you know, maybe you're taking tea with her and she'll say, so are you going to be participating in the tournament? Um, I'm kneeling at one of the small tables um that i have prepared out with um with the tea implements the the sea is rocking but i'm keeping up with pouring and and preparing the tea for her and myself yeah. um 
Yes, I imagine that I will be participating, though I came to observe only. Seems I can never escape from actually participating. Well, there's probably quite a lot to be gained from observation. I myself like to keep my eye on things. You sort of learn to do that when you're as old as me. You need to know who means you trouble and who doesn't. Is that right? You keep your eye on things. I say as I watch her eyes, but pour the tea into a moving cup without looking. Uh, are you studying her right now? I think so. Okay, let's do a move then. So if we go to, if you all want to follow along, the basic moves tab has all of our basic moves. And one of the moves is called study. When you study something in order to learn about the world or establish new facts, uh, roll. Uh, what element do you think you're using here? I think... I'm probably using water or metal. Um, I think water because of the awareness mm -hmm. um, or metal because of the calculation and control. Mm. Let's go with metal because of the way you've described it, you're kind of like controlling the teacup and stuff as you sort of also keep an eye out or keep an eye on her. Uh, okay. So roll plus one. So I have a nine. Okay, let's read the move again. On a hit, you gain basic information. Um, Sorry, the dice just refreshed. I have a 12. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. Um, well, in that case, uh, you get basic information plus on a 10 plus you get two hold. Now you can spend those hold one for one to do different things. Ask a question about a situation, ask a question about a person, ask any other question you want, learn a person's scale. We can talk about scale in a minute or reveal a detail, which allows you to declare something to be true about the situation. But I'll, okay. give, you the I'll give you the basic information. The basic okay. information is this person is not who they appear to be. At one point, a teacup goes like sliding off the table, or like, like I think maybe you lose control of a teacup or maybe you intentionally lose control of the teacup. But a teacup goes sliding off and she's presenting herself as this very like hunched over frail person, but she very rapidly like instinctively grabs it. And so it doesn't land and then sets it down and doesn't even spill a drop. So this old lady is more than she appears to be. Do you want to spend one of your holds now or save them for later? Yeah. Um, I want to ask a question about okay. her identity. Okay. Who is she? Ah, good. It is well known that very, very high level, grandmaster level Wulin warriors will attend the tournament in disguise in order to find new students or to settle old scores. She is almost certainly somebody who's, who is uh, a very, very powerful warrior, um, very talented warrior in disguise. Okay. Um, I would like to reveal a detail. Okay. Um, she knows the attack is coming before it happens. Oh, good. Very good. I like that a lot. So your holder spent. Let's let's put a pause there. But I'm gonna. I'm actually. I think this is confirmed when you start to hear the commotion topside because you're down below. So you hear like. You hear the boarding and you hear like commotion of people trying to fight off the attackers and you just see a small smile on her lips as this is happening. And I give my easy smile and say, it's a, it's a shame when something interrupts tea. She says, isn't it though? And she goes back to drinking her tea. Right. Stone of the heavens. You said you were sort of standing Leo and Kate style at the at the head of the ship, right? Looking out at the, mm -hmm. at the, uh, at Considering the- Considering my future. You will notice a glimmer. No, yeah, you'll notice a glimmer, a strange glimmer coming from shore. You can't quite make out what it is unless you really focus on it. Um, what do you do? 
well, you've given me two options and one of them is interesting. So let's study that glimmer. Yeah, take a look. Let's see how it goes. Which, uh, which thing do you think you're using? Which element? I, I, I have to like, based on what metal was just used for, it feels like metal to me. I'm down for that. Go ahead and roll. Which is my minus one. But you know what? That's a three. Uh, three minus one. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a four minus one. Uh, okay, very good. Um, I want you to go ahead and mark that, which means you can't use it until you get it unmarked. Um, and cool. it also has- and I gain XP, right? Uh, do you get, let's see, I can't remember if you, this is an XP on a miss game. Let me look. There's a list of all the things that give you XP. Uh, take a loss in a conflict, agree to another role in a conflict. Uh, no, 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 you don't. Okay. No, it's not according to my little list here. There's other things to do, but, um, but you, I want you to mark that element and I'm going to tell you, you get caught by surprise by the boarding. Um, I think you're so focused on whatever that glimmering thing is that's, that is uh, on the shore. You don't realize that the ship is already like crawling with people and you just see like a foot kicking you in the chest when you turn around and sending you flying off the boat. Splish splash. Let's okay. go to Ninth Raven. Ninth Raven, you're pacing the ship. You don't miss a beat. You see the boarding before it even happens. You see the boats and you can see what's about to happen. What do you do? Well, for starters, well, I have to draw my blade, of course. I'm there. This is, I have not seen this before. So as like, sort of like, I imagine like a grappling hook, like reaches over. Could I just cut the rope of it before they start climbing up? Uh, yeah, I like that a lot. Um, yeah, like you basically kind of cut them off. That's good. Uh, I think that would be a move called overcome. So if you want to follow along, overcome says when you do something under pressure, roll, uh, choose your mm -hmm. element. What do you think you're doing here? Um, I think this is... I think this is going to be with speed because like it's, I have to cut faster than they can climb up. So I think middle. that's great. Yeah, go ahead. Or wait, no, no, fire. Fire, yeah. Yeah. That is a seven. On a seven to nine, you're gonna do it, but there's a complication. I'll present you a worse outcome or a hard choice. I'm gonna give you a hard choice. You can defend your ship, uh, or you will notice that, let's see how I want to frame this. Let me take a look at your entanglements. I think this is entanglement time. You can defend your ship or you can defend uh, no I don't no 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 okay you will see on the other ship empty fist dancer you might know empty fist dancer from reputation they're not in your entanglements but you might know them by reputation they're clearly here to participate in the tournament just like some of the other people but it's it's on another boat and they are currently overwhelmed by these attackers. You can decide what you want to do. I gotta, I gotta defend Empty Fist Dancer because like, if like Shadow was mourning found out I could have done something to prevent this, he's not gonna be very happy if I don't do anything. So how are you going to get to the other ship? Uh, how close is the other ship? That's it's, the question. Uh, it's probably close enough for you to do some 
some wuxia flying maneuvers to get to it. Yeah. But you might have to roll though. Yeah, I'm going to do that. That sounds great. Do another overcome. Yeah, do another overcome and just choose your element. Yeah. I don't know what element would this be? Probably, let's take a look. Maybe, hmm. Well, Maybe flexi flexibility, yeah. because mm -hmm. you are, you know, able to switch uh, like kind of strategies or whatever in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Possibly uh, speed or speed might be a good one. Um, wisdom. I would. Like, maybe. I, I would oh man, you're just, <laughs> my two like stats that the worst and the best. <laughs> yeah. It's your choice um, though. In any case, since like. It's flexibility and like wisdom or, or awareness. It mm. seems to be more water, so a minus one. Go for it. Um, and that's a eight. Okay, we'll come back to that in a moment. I think I want to cut over to Fifth Raven. So Fifth Raven, you're in the middle of doing the acupuncture, like sort of talking to this guy, you, and you see the ship is being boarded. What do you do? Um, I think what I'm going to do for you is, uh, I'm going to use one of my acupuncture needles and just put it like on the side of his neck to knock him out. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I was thinking, I was kind of like on this kind of towards the side of the ship anyways, that's where I was sitting and I would just roll his body up against the wall. So when the attackers come over, they might not notice us and we kind of are just trying <laughs> to hide and, yeah. uh, not so that's good. You're maintaining your cover. That that's good by by yeah. knocking you out. Yeah, yeah. But and nevertheless, like, you're surrounded by you're surrounded by these troops. What do you do? Um, I think uh, I'm just gonna kind of see how that how it's going, and if uh, and if I need to, I will um, uh, maybe some well placed uh, um, I don't know. If I'm not getting engaged, I'm not gonna engage. You could do study for now. Yeah, I'm just going to do a study. So um, I think that would be water would be the best. Um, it's awareness and wisdom. Yeah, go for it. So uh, I got an 11 plus two, so 13. Nice. Uh, you have two hold, and I'll give you the basic information. The basic information is... There's one of these boarders who's holding back from all the rest. And that one's the problem. The ship would otherwise be able to defend itself. But once that character gets involved, it's gonna to be tough. And he's a great big dude. Okay. Um, can I judge by how he's, uh, maybe I could judge by like how he's watching the like i see what he's seeing so i kind of know i want to judge his scale okay good um is he is he... equal scale to you okay so um i'm gonna keep my other hold and i'm gonna um try to just nonchalantly <laughs> make my way over to him i think as uh, you're approaching there's Maybe, like a lot you know, of, with my like, head down and like yeah, asking, you know, please, yeah. please. There's a lot of chaos going on. You know, yeah. people on the ship are fighting other people or fighting the borders. All that's happening. And he's like kind of across the way. As you're approaching, he raises up a huge, he has like a massive, like heavy gauntlet on his hand, a big glove. Mm -hmm. And it has a fuse and he lights the fuse. <laughs> and so it's like burning we'll come back to that okay <laughs> shadowless morning you could hear the fight breaking out on, on your ship above you and the old woman says sounds like whatever's going on up there isn't 
really going in the ship's favor. Well then, um, I have a, a sip of tea and then I kind of secure my cup on, on a little, like on the box that all of my tea implements are in so that way it won't skitter. And I, and I, and I rise and I say, if you'll excuse me, I have a matter to attend to above deck. It would seem you do. And she takes another sip. And I bow and say, please help yourself in my absence. I'm sorry that I'm such a poor host this evening. And then and I proceed out. Indeed. When you get up there, it's just like fight broken out. What do you do? Um, is there an obvious leader or uh, of, of the enemy combatants or anything like that? Um, maybe I might give you a study, except right around this time is when you see Stone of the Heavens get kicked off the boat and go straight into the water. <laughs> what do you do? Um, how far away is that boat from my boat? Uh, it's the closest one, although you have that power that lets you just go wherever you need to be, right? So, <laughs> um, Okay, so that's within eyesight. I, I it's within being... eyesight, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, okay. would be, it would be hard for anyone else to reach, but you could get there easily. Yeah. Um, I will also say that I think this implicates one of your entanglements, correct? Perhaps. It does, because you believe that Stone of the Heavens has hidden their true power from you. Um, I think I want an inner conflict role first. Okay. So inner conflict is the game's kind of main engine here. It reads, when you come face to face with emotional turmoil and pressure from an entanglement or a personal issue, uh, go ahead and mark XP and roll anything but your style element. Okay, so I'm rolling anything but water. Um, I think that I am rolling metal again to remain in control. I'm not going to pursue this opportunity. Um, I believe that he has the ability to handle his own circumstances, though he hides it from me. And I will not intercede. We shall see. Go ahead and roll. We'll see. That's the that's the idea. <laughs> I have a seven. A seven. On a seven to nine, you must either flee the scene or mark an element to keep yourself steady. Mm. I will mark an element. Okay. So just give me the wrap up of the scene. Like when you see Stone of the Heavens going flying into the water, what does it look like? What do you do? Um, I take one step, like I'm going to go and, and help. And then I plant that foot on the ground and it stops. But my eyes narrow and my easy smile fades. And then I turn and look back at the conflict on my own ship. <laughs> Very good, very good. All right. Well, so do I mark that element or do I mark any element? Uh, does this, if it says your choice, you can mark whichever one you want. Okay. Uh, you mark whatever you want. Okay. okay. Um, fabulous. I want to take a look at Stone of the Heavens real quick. Um, Ah, very good. Well, let's make it more complicated, Ninth Raven. You are going to go defend, um, who was it? Uh, uh, empty Fist Dancer. Empty, empty Fist Dancer, yes. Yeah, you were going to go defend Empty Fist Dancer on some other boat. <laughs> and you see Stone of the Heavens get kicked and go flying into the water. <laughs> oh no. Oh, but- What do you do? This is also has to deal with my entanglement. It does indeed, yes. <laughs> um, and I know, and I'm pretty sure Stone of the Heavens can swim. Right. So I, I still gotta go deal with the, deal with uh, 
empty fist dancer because like uh they're overwhelmed so i got to go deal and with yet that. you swore to shadow this morning that you would protect yeah, stone of the heavens um oh, roll right. inner conflict please <laughs> um anything but your style element all right um and mark xp as well okay um, I'm going to say this is trying to keep control of my emotions. So metal instead of fire. Oh, that's pretty good. That's a nine. Okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> you have to either flee the scene or mark an element to keep yourself steady. Um, I'm going to mark water as an element because that like like that would be making me uncertain about things. I agree. A shadowless morning, you also see Ninth Raven on another boat, clearly also seeing Stone of the Heavens fly into the water, and you see Ninth Raven, you see them pretty clearly deciding to not go help Stone of the Heavens and instead go after something else. I, I don't need you to react to that necessarily. I am curious how you feel though. Hmm. Um, it's kind of like put a pin in that because what's that about? Um, because that's definitely something they ought to be doing, but now is not the time. Indeed. Well, stone of the heavens, you're in the water. <laughs> and no one came to rescue you. You are in the water, though. And I'm curious, just uh, what do you do? How far out are we from shore? You could actually swim to shore pretty easy. If you wanted to swim to shore, you could do that, I think, pretty. I, I think I will attempt to do that. I don't know where this attack is coming from, but it seems to be everywhere. It is breaking out. It doesn't seem to have broken out on the island, incidentally. These people came from, well, it's unclear. One of the other it's unclear. I think you can be doing a study while you swim to shore though, <laughs> if you want to try to assess what's going on. How? Happen. How, like physically how or? Like, like that would require looking backwards and then. Or just looking well, at what's coming up as well. You know. <laughs> I, okay. Yeah, do you yeah. know what? Sure. Physics is is a suggestion. That's sure. So I, I will make it to shore. Yeah, you'll make it's it to shore. How much do I learn on the way? Yeah, yeah. If you learn anything along the way, basically. Uh, I will roll with water because I am both surrounded by it and being pretty flexible, I think, right now in terms of priorities. That's boxcars. Hey, good. You'll get basic information. Uh, well, so I will just confirm what we talked about a moment ago. It doesn't seem like the attack came from shore. Uh, you don't see any evidence of anyone either watching this fight take place, or you don't see any of these attackers anywhere on the island, at least not near the pier. Um, probably they came up in their own boats somewhere behind the other ships. Um, you get two hold though, and if you want to take a look at the move to see how to spend them, uh, you can spend those hold okay. to do various things. You can spend one now, or you can wait till later. Uh, I will ask. I I guess this is more like once I reach shore and can look out. Mm -hmm. Are they coming from one specific boat, and what like are there marks on it that I identify it in any way? Yes, that's a good question you can see the boat they're coming from. The moon is bright in the sky and you can make out what appears to be a banner of the Ox Pilgrim Escort Bureau. And that, would I know what that means? Yes. They are essentially the emperor's cops. Um, they- Oh. Ooh. They are, they're not like officially part of the state apparatus, but they're considered like yeah. loyal to the emperor, right? So, yeah. Anything else you want to spend another? 
あうん。I can't exactly learn scale.、Uh, yeah, there's really nobody that you're. Yeah, no. And that, that pretty much covers it. Okay, you can hold it and then、uh, yeah, if you spend it, it, you know, you, if you spend it like, you know, fairly soon. I, I, I'm honestly satisfied with that one question. That's good. So、yeah. we'll see if something comes up. Indeed, indeed. Oh, right here's、there. a question. Oh, sure, go ahead. Yeah. Are you sure that no one on this island? Like, for example, Gilded Eel or one of his subordinates knows th- about this attack. Oh, interesting. I will tell you something. You see a person thick in the crowd, kind of right where the boats land. You know, like there's people like basically there to meet the boats, bringing the lines in, yeah, yeah, yeah. selling things, all that. You see one person in the crowd wearing a silvery, glittery mask. They are clearly watching what's going on, but maybe I don't think they're necessarily connected to it. They might just be keeping an eye for Gilded Eel for all you know. This might also、okay. be the glittery thing you were noticing earlier, too.、So. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Fifth Raven. Fifth Raven. You're approaching this. This guy's big. He's so big. I mean, he's like four foot wide at the shoulder. Massive, like you know, just just a great,、uh, big barrel chested guy, and he's got that glove that has a fuse. <laughs> What are you doing right now? You're muted. Yeah,、uh, I think what I'm going to do is just try to.、Um... I'm sort of I'm bowed and my hands are up and I'm just trying to show that I'm not like a threat. I'm just saying, please don't hurt, please don't hurt me. And then when I kind of get close enough, I just want to lick my fingers and like pinch the fuse out. <laughs> Very good. Just,、uh, that's definitely overcome.、Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Name your element, then roll. <laughs> I think.、Uh, let's see. Is there one for like deception or? Maybe creativity. Yeah, I guess it's going to be creativity. I think that would be the best. Go for it. All right.、Uh, a five. Just as you get ready to try to snuff the fuse, it's reaching the end. He. Quickly gets into a defensive stance, and then launches forward, and the gauntlet makes contact with your body at the moment、mm. that the fuse reaches its destination. There's a loud explosion, and you go flying off the boat. I mean, just trajectory, just whoosh, flying like a rocket across the water. Mark that element that you just used. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so fire. And alternatively, you can mark wounded if you don't want to mark the element. But wounded gives you a minus two ongoing while you have it. But your element is free. And yeah, you just land hard in the water. And、um, does you the learn fist something about come with、guy. me? Is it like a rocket fist?、Uh, no, it doesn't quite work like that. No. <laughs> well, it's unclear. You didn't know, really get a good look <laughs> before you、right. went flying. All right, I'm in the water. You're in the water. Ninth Raven. Poor,、uh, normally very talented and indeed very talented, but probably just a little overwhelmed.、Um, empty fist dancer. He is just like, like, completely overwhelmed on his boat.、Uh, and I mean, he's like, you know, blocking blows and dodging. He's keeping, he's keeping himself, you know, in it, but he's just not really turning the tide here. What do you do? Well. I have my sword, of course, and I'm going to start striking, like weaving in and out of like the combatants, and just taking out the optimal ones in the least amount of moves as possible. Yeah, I like when it. Necessary. Yeah, I think that's great, and、uh, you're able to kind of like jump over. I think the boats have kind of come close enough, and you're. Uh, yeah, so this is so this move is called. So there's basically different types of fights in this game, and the one we're going to be doing is called 
deal with troops, <laughs> um, which is yeah. on the bottom left. When you fight a group of foes who are collectively below your scale, roll with your style element. All right. Will I ever roll above a 10? No, it's a nine. <laughs> it's a nine. On a hit, you defeat them, uh, but not easily. Describe how you do so. Give us, the, give us the fight scene. Okay. As I said before, I was moving in and out and like striking them down with slash after slash. And like, I imagine like, I am trying to mostly defend uh, empty fist stancer so like if he's going to like take a blow i will take it instead nice and you eventually get rid of all the troops right like what is mm -hmm. like give it give us the the last little like troop going over the edge or whatever that looks like yeah i don't i don't think uh it's well with like the last remaining troop i don't think i actually use my blade for this i just pick them up like by the scruff of like their shirt and just throw them off the boat. Very good, very good. Let's check in the Shadowless Morning. Shadowless Morning, mm, the fight is probably going to be, well, I don't know. I mean, I think it's kind of those things where like you can get involved as you need to, but I don't think it's really a situation where you're having to battle huge numbers of troops. I'm curious what you're doing instead though. Well, I was trying to identify if there was a leader on the, my boat before I noticed everything on everybody else's boats. Okay, well, so then that's a good thing. You will see that big dude send someone <laughs> flying uh, flying across the way. You hear the explosion, right? And mm -hmm. you'll see that person, and he's laughing. He's like, ha, 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 ha. And he's clearly not the target of the, of the borders. So he must be a leader or at least a very highly placed... Uh, uh, troop within the group. What do you do? Um, I think I will um, use my uh, Storm Rider move to uh, quick, quick as a flash, uh, move over to that to that area um, behind him. Oh, nice! Very good. Um, you do that, then what? Um, and I think I'm trying to think of something, some, some good one-liner, um, but I <laughs> deliver good one-liner and then like try and toss him Insert into the one -liner. water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. I like it. Um, yeah, you'll get the jump on him for sure. You just throw him overboard. Is that what happens? Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. I'm trying to debate whether I want this to be an overcome or I think it's probably overcome because he's not really, you're not really dueling him. Uh, you're, you're kind of taken in by surprise. So give me an overcome roll. Okay. So I think I am doing this um, with fire um, and I have a nine. Let's read the move. Um, there's a complication. I may present you a worse outcome or a hard choice. I think it's gonna be a worse outcome. You are going to be able to toss him overboard, but then you're gonna be surrounded by troops. Okay. So, but go ahead and describe it. Describe the, even like Storm Rider as well. Give us the whole scene. Yeah. So I think that we see uh, uh, Shadow this morning standing on the deck of his boat. Uh, and then he looks out and sees the man laughing. Um, and then it pans back to the to Shadowless Morning's boat, and there's nobody there. And then it pans, pans back behind the laughing man. Um, and then it, it it shows his face. And then it, the, the the camera just kind of pans to the right, and you see him. You see Shadowless Morning directly behind him. Um, he flings out his uh, his his cloth robes um and i think they they just seem to magically extend they they wrap him they wrap him up and uh shadowless morning gives two spins and spinning him around tosses him out into the water but then you're surrounded by troops mm -hmm. and here i think i'm going to give our 
our hero another chance to heroically intervene. Ninth Raven, on another boat, you see Shadowless Morning, who you've already, uh, who you've already like um, uh, gone against your word once. Uh, um, you see Shadowless Morning being surrounded by troops. Yeah. Oh God, why does, can no one fight these days, honestly? Well, Shadowless Morning will probably be okay, but. Yeah, <laughs> but, I, but I need to go help out. That's, I have a duty. You do have a duty. But before you can go, let me take a look at Empty Fist Dancer, who, hmm, interesting. I'm trying to see if you have a connection to, oh, you don't have it. You don't have a direct connection to Empty Fist I Dancer. I do not. But Empty Fist Dancer will kind of stop you before you go. And he'll say, thank you. Thank you for your help. Hmm. And I don't know what to say in this moment. I don't think the Ninth Raven is a person of many words. But they give a curt mod. He says, but before you go, will, will, will I see you on the island? More than likely. And yeah, we'll just leave that there. Um, I'll come back to shuttle this morning and the troops and all that in a bit. Fifth Raven, <laughs> you are, you got sent flying really far. And you are flying over a boat that is not under siege like the other ones. You can tell that as you're flying over, <laughs> over said boat. Like, <laughs> all right, well, I think that'll be, uh... Swimming you, towards that boat. That well, you haven't landed yet. Oh. Um, so do you want to try to land on that boat or just go where the where the physics will take you? Um, yeah, I think I want to try to land. I would prefer to land on a boat than in the water. Um, yeah. Especially one that isn't being attacked. Absolutely. I think there's probably um, like, a, like a rigging situation, you know, like sails yeah. and stuff, you know, what would you do? So I think uh, what he would do is... Um, sort of just sort of as he's flying by reach out grab a piece of the rigging it would swing he'd swing around and hit the sail and then you know swashbuckler style slide down the slide down the sail and uh maybe land in the three-point hero pose <laughs> the, the the black widow yeah black widow, black widow. yeah, yeah. The poser yeah uh, the poser yeah <laughs> and then um, yeah. He'd stand up and be like, oh, my back. Oh. Yeah, good, good. I don't need to roll. I just, I like that as a bit of fiction. It's good. Yeah. But what do you do when you're on this boat, though? This boat that's not under siege like the others. Uh, I'm going to then realize, why? wait a minute, why isn't this? I think I'll study. Uh, or can I use a hold from... You can take, you can spend your other hold. It's fine. Use my other hold. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let's... What's the situation over here? Uh, I'm going to just fill you in in the same way that what's Stone... the, I feel like I'm under more threat now than. Possibly, yeah, yeah. Because, like, I know what the threat is over there. It's just some goons, but over here. You will see the. <laughs> um, I'm just going to confirm what I said earlier to Stone of the Heavens. This boat belongs to the Ox Pilgrim Escort Bureau. You see the banner with their mark it has kind of a stylized oxen on it oh but here's the thing someone is getting chewed out really badly right now because they weren't supposed to fly that banner and so they're like rapidly trying to take the banner down and put up like <laughs> some other banner they're like you idiot they're not supposed to know we're here and like <laughs> and like they're rolling the banner up right so you know that Ox the ox pilgrim escort bureau is infiltrating the contest right mm -hmm. um very brazenly at the outset, but even if this little assault doesn't work, they're probably going to continue to be a problem because the emperor hates Gil the deal. So, right. but uh, let's just wrap up with Shadowless Morning and Ninth Raven, and then we'll kind of get to shore with Stone of the Heavens. So, Shadowless Morning, I'm going to give you a chance to defeat the troops before Ninth Raven even gets there. If you want to roll, deal with troops. Okay. Um your style element available 
my style element is available. Um, let's see, does the move uh, presuppose violence or can I like talk them down? Oh, interesting. Hmm. I think it does presuppose violence because otherwise it's hearts and minds, right? Okay. If you want to try to talk them down though, you can hearts and minds them. I think that's okay too. Yeah, they come, they all come clambering up and I say, you're like, I, I just kind of like look down and I'm like, your leader is defeated. You should walk away. Mm, yeah, roll hearts and minds. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, so I. What is hearts? Does hearts and minds uh, say that you have to use a particular element? No, it's always you just always pick. Okay. What you think is appropriate for what you're doing. Um, I think this is wisdom. I'm trying to impart them some wisdom. Okay. Um, <laughs> a very and, condescending sort of imparting of wisdom. Uh, yeah. What'd you get? Uh, you ten. Nice. Uh, they bow to your words and do what you want. Give me the scene. How do they back off? Um, they take stock of their situation. Um, they become aware that they are leaderless. Um, and, and that probably means any one of them trying to fight me would not go well. Uh, and all of them collectively decide that they don't want to individually fight me and one by one kind of back off and uh, I guess decide that, you know, just to fight another day and return back to their their smaller boats um, and pick, or pick pick a pick a different boat to attack. Fair enough. And here I think we see Ninth Raven hop hop hopping, uh, uh, froggering over to the uh, <laughs> to your boat. And I'd like to just have the scene briefly with you and uh, Ninth Raven rather Ninth Raven. That'd be great. I. I imagine like as like they're just like slowly just like the crowd is like parting like I land on top of the boat and just like my sword is drawn and I'm like ready for a fight but there is none coming. Um, they're still clambering away and I turn to face you like unconcerned with what mm -hmm. with what's going on with them say ah so what has become of Stone of the Heavens? Um, they that's it. That's, that's inner conflict. Roll inner conflict. Ninth Raven. Yeah. 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 Mark XP. Uh, roll inner conflict. <laughs> um. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I would say. Again, I would say this is metal. Just not trying to like lose my composure oh thank god that is a 13 13 on a 10 plus you managed to keep yourself together continue <laughs> all right they managed to well he managed to get away from the fight is that right yes well very well then and your ship um, currently overwhelmed. <laughs> currently overwhelmed. But I figured that Empty Fist Dancer needed more help than my own ship at the time. Oh, Empty oh. Fist Dancer. That's in her conflict shuttle this morning. Mark XP and roll. Right. Um, I think this is control again. Um, 11 is what I have on the dice. You keep it together. I'm curious what you think, though, when you realize that Empty Fist Dancer was the person you love was imperiled. Oh, um, I, so I don't think I realized that Empty Fist Dancer was here yet. Uh, um, so I. I start to let myself glance around and, and try and find them, mm -hmm. uh, but but then I I stop my eyes and I focus on Ninth Raven um, and my my easy smile returns. Uh, good, 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 good. Stone of the heavens. What do you 
do is you sort of make your way into shore. You see this person wearing this kind of silvery mask, kind of not trying to be too, I mean, they're clearly trying to hang back from the crowd a little bit. What do you do? Uh, okay, first question. Have the people on shore like noticed the Oh, the chaos breaking out. Yeah, um, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah probably, probably some of them have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's dark. Okay, cool. But there's so I'm not there. obligated to warn them. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's become almost like a. I mean, I think maybe there are probably some people placing bets right now, and who whoever bet on Ninth Raven ship, uh, whoever bet on Ninth Raven ship just lost a lot of money. So um. <laughs> we, we, we walk past a gambling table. Where right, exactly. Goes yeah. out and exactly. someone. But uh, I'm going to pursue this silver masked person deeper into the island. Good, also, good, good. Oh, second question. How far out of the boats? They're all still coming in, right? Yeah, they'll be here pretty shortly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Then I'm going to make an executive decision and not be here when that happens. Very good. And I think with that, uh, we'll pick up on you chasing that person in a minute or next yeah. time. But I want to just end the session with a little paint the scene question about the island as the boats do pull in, uh, whether it's the Ox Pilgrim Escort Bureau's boat that's not really their boat, uh, the boat that Shadowless Morning and Ninth Raven are on, um, uh, the whatever chaotic situations happening on Ninth Raven's original boat, um, you arrive at the island. And my question for everyone at the table is, as you look at this like, crush of people on the island and all this activity um it's, it's like there's like a little town like a little kind of town at the bottom of the hill and at the top of the hill is where gilded eel lives but you spend most of your uh just sort of free time in this little village this little town i want to know what you notice or otherwise how you understand that the emperor has no reach here theoretically This is, um, this is going to sound a bit of a weird thing, but it's the soil that you can tell it in. Because on the uh, mainland, there, the soil is your typical standard brown soil. Here, it's a very dark black soil in which they actually grow certain types of foods that can't be grown on the mainland. Interesting. Interesting. How do you know, Shadowless Morning, that the Emperor has no reach here? Um, the Emperor will not allow anybody to build a structure taller than the palace. But here there is a structure that clearly defies this decree and is like three times as tall as the palace. It's probably whatever's at the top of the hill, right? Where Gilded mm -hmm. Eel lives. Yeah. Fifth Raven, what do you think? I think uh, the the emperor has outlawed some sort of uh, you know a sin like uh, maybe gambling, and there's just gambling everywhere. Every place has a place where you can gamble with dice or cards, yeah, betting or shops and stuff. Yeah. Betting shops. I mean, and it's just it's just. It's They're holding a secret illegal martial arts tournament. <laughs> of course, they have gambling. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Stone of the Heavens, how do you know? Uh, I will say that there are banners in Imperial script and a script that is banned on the mainland that is mostly used by pirates. Very so, good, very good. Yeah. I love it. Okay, so we will do our, uh, this is the end of the session. Uh, we'll check in on the entanglements to see if you are um, going to get some extra XP for how it uh, how it kind of got how it worked out. Uh, let's talk about Fifth Raven. I don't think your second one came into play, Fifth Raven, but the first one kind of did because you did you went out of your way to maintain your disguise. Um, right. So go ahead and mark two XP for that one. And Shadowless Morning. Yours definitely did. Uh, both did. You get three XP. Let's go to Ninth Raven. 
Um, <laughs> your second one did, you get two XP. And let's go to Stone of the Heavens. Oh, you don't have one highlighted Stone of the Heavens, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, I just didn't do that. That was meant to be my Gilded Eel one. Okay. Um, ba, 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 ba. I think the second one, hmm, the first one, I don't think the first one quite came into play yet. I have a plan for that though. We just didn't get there. Okay. The second one though, so leave it highlighted. <laughs> the second one, my senior shadow this morning disapproves of me and my friend Ninth Raven agrees with them. Hmm. How, yeah. you, how do you feel? I don't think I was involved in that. Yeah. You, I don't think yeah. that was my entanglement that got. Yeah, not quite so much there. Yeah, we'll get you some XP next time. All right. Yeah. So that's the end of the session. Let's, it was a quick play session, uh, to be fair. Let's talk stars and wishes. We got a few minutes left. Stars is a little, stars and wishes are a little debrief. It's a little debrief thing I like to do. Stars are things that we enjoyed about the session and wishes are things we hope to see next time. So the stars can be just something about the game, a scene, a character. Wishes can be something you hope to see next time in the story. Um, whoever would like to go first, uh, please go ahead and do so. I have some thoughts too, if anybody wants to go first. Uh, I gotta give a star for how cool the action sequences were. Just like, just like, just lots of like flips and tricks and I, I don't know how to otherwise describe it. It's just really cool stuff. Yeah, that's a star for me too. I love the cinematic combat and I like that we got to see, I mean, we didn't have much time with the characters today, but I just like that we got to see a little bit of them and kind of how they handle situations and stuff. I thought that was really enjoyable. Uh, I also have to give a star for Shadowless Morning for the tea. Like that was just very, very neat. Mm -hmm. neat. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'll give a star to, um, I really <laughs> like, I like the, um, I just like the sort of com the inherent comedy of Stone of the Heavens, like turning around and being kicked off the boat. And then that, so the heavens being in the water being like a, a kind of interesting uh, point of drama between the characters, kind of. Um, yeah. <laughs> essentially, everyone ignored you. I just that, that, was, that was a good move. I, thought I love how enjoyed. organic all of yeah. the inner conflicts about that were. Yeah. <laughs> like it was, the player was hesitating. And then, oh, that's inner conflict. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, well, and I also like the, um, I like that, uh, I like that by the other characters not helping you, it just made the whole, the humor of the situation like even more. So I just really enjoyed that. I thought it was, thought it was great. Yeah, I liked that when uh, the, as soon as he was kicked off, just like everyone was like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> no less than three people saw me, saw it happen and chose not to help. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't see I was fine, but I don't. I don't. You can think swim. I know you, so I don't know if I. <laughs> you could swim, just yeah. Well, and everyone yeah. chose not to help for different reasons. Which I thought was great. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, like, I'm not even mad that I didn't do anything this session. That was just fun. <laughs> Everybody got experience for you getting kicked off. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, everyone. You were the fulcrum. Except me. Else. Yeah. Me. So, uh, let's go to our other stars and wishes. Yeah. Maybe some wishes uh, would be some experience points for Stone. Oh yeah, but I, Stone will be fine. I, I actually had like a, I had a little thing prepared for the first one, but we just didn't quite get there. So quite. yeah, it was waiting on shore. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I have a wish. My wish is going to be um, I. Uh, I think my wish is I really want to see whether whether and how characters like get involved in the politics between the emperor and Gilded Eel. There's clearly something going on here. It's probably something you could you can ignore, but if you do get roped into it, I'll be curious like how that all shapes up because the emperor seems like the antagonist right now, but Gilded Eel's the bad guy. So it's, you'll be kind of curious to see how that plays out. Yeah, I have a few ideas relating to that. 
nothing concrete so far, so I can't share. Uh, but I, I really, I really want to interact with everybody else. Like we saw a little bit with Shadowless Mooring, but oh man, I can't wait till like interact with Stone of the Heavens and Fifth Raven. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, I'd like to uh, interact with um, Empty Fist Dancer and and uh, Ninth Raven more. Um, and just sort of explore those entanglements. Yeah, I thought uh, my star, I think, is how the how everybody kind of collaborated on the entanglements to get what we've got. And I feel like we already have a little bit of an idea of some of these dynamics and relationships. And I think that was kind of exemplified with what happened when Stone of the Heavens was booted off of the ship. Like that felt like the the outcome of those entanglements um which was neat um i think my wish is i want to know more about the old older lady who was having tea and what her deal is with this uh this clan or or group of pirates or whatever the ox pilgrim escort bureau um, yeah i'm curious about that too uh i have some ideas i'm not going to say what they are and i don't even know if and it may not they may not hold i might adjust them but i don't I don't think she's connected to the Ox Pilgrim Escort Bureau. The, the fact was just that she was aware it was about to happen, which is a different thing, right? So, right. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be very interesting to see how it plays out. Mm. I, uh, my other wish, I, I know, like, I know exactly what's waiting for Stone of the Heavens on the shore, and uh, we just didn't get there, but I'm very excited to do that. <laughs> so, uh -huh. I'm going to wish for more wonderful little details, like the the fucking bomb gauntlet guy, yeah, and the, the betting, the, the fact that people realize all their ships are being assaulted and place bets. It's just it it sets tone so well. I'm so excited to exist in this world. Bomb gauntlet guy will come back. His name is Barrel Stabs Bow. In case you're curious, and um, and he will he will be there for sure. Um, any other stars or wishes? Oh, I don't want to forget about you. Uh, he's unconscious on the boat. Yes, that's my other wish. I, kind of, I love I'm this. Gonna, I'm going to circle back to him. I love this type of character. I love the you type of character. It's my, in, in other games, he's like a, he's, he's, he's Pate, um, but he's basically like a hapless dope who shouldn't be there. <laughs> and so you How might be you stuck with a hapless dope. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. It'll be fun. Yeah, definitely a star for like getting you out of harm's way. Yeah, that, that was, was good. Uh, I thought that, that was, was really good. clever. Yeah. yeah. And then and, and, and maintaining your identity, right? That's like that was the really cool part of that. That's why I got the XP for that, by the way. Nice. Um, yeah, so that was good. Uh awesome. Anything else before we go? We're a little over, but Okie doke. Well, I'm going to stop the recording.